Well, yeah, me too. It felt good this time. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. So, so you want to see my tits too? Really? <laughs>
no wipers at all on your car and have one operational caliper for your entire braking system. And as long as your emission system was good, you'd pass. Uh, unfortunately though, if you don't pass emissions, this beautiful car will become a beautiful paperweight. So, no pressure. Parking here at the smog place, I almost, almost hit this wall. No! <laughs> Crazy. In an effort to keep everybody honest, these test-only smog stations can't work on any of your emissions or recommend you to anybody. They could do any other kind of work, though. Here's our bill. $64.75. And so, the waiting game begins. Not much happened for a while, they just left it sitting there, running. Beautiful plumage. Thank you. They did connect it to the computer, and then there was a sudden flurry of activity. I tried to have a listen in. What's wrong with it? I'll tell you what's wrong with it, my love. It's dead. That's what's wrong with it. No, no, it's, it's resting, look. Look, my lad. I know a dead parrot when I see one, and I'm looking at one right now. No, that's not dead, it's uh, resting. Resting? Well, good news and bad news. Good news is that, according to our emissions specialists here, the emissions on the Porsche engine are good. It's not putting out any excess bad gases. And from that point of view, it passes. And so I'm very happy about that. But it failed. And so it failed because vehicle failed due to OBD self-test incomplete. And so they're going to charge me $54 for the test. And if I can fix it, when I come back, they're just going to charge me $10 to uh, retest it. And so the emissions are good, but what that means apparently is, let me have a look at the other thing here, it talks about it. It says that the OBD2 monitors are not ready for the secondary air system. And so what they're telling me here is I need to drive it some more, and that if I have the engine computer, which I do, thank you, I do have that uh, Durametric, um, we could plug that in and see if those monitors are ready. And apparently we just need to drive it some more. So let's go drive it some more. Uh, and then we got maybe two or three miles down the road. It was driving just fine, and we got the check engine light. That check engine light is bad, folks. P1341 suggests our Bank One Vario Cam is buggered. Time for a flashback. That's better. Here we go. This is a Vario Cam tensioner with solenoid from episode 20 when we took it apart. The whole unit here is 1500 bucks, approximately new. This black part I'm taking off here is the Bank One Vario Cam solenoid itself. That's about four or five hundred bucks. And that little plunger there is the part that redirects the oil and makes the Vario Cam work. Now, we did take this apart fairly well and lube it, clean it, and replace a bunch of bits. Feel good about that. We did check the uh, solenoids for resistance. So I'm thinking they might be good. I'm going to sort of reset it, ignore it, and go again. Here's our setup, very fast and furious like. I hope you'll agree. We've got the Durametric set up there with a PC laptop. Well, hey, let's give it a go. Two hours later. And I'm probably counting my chickens, but it does say pass, 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 pass. We've got five passes, that's all we need. And, uh, we're going to drive home and um, see if that is good. If it is good, we're going to try to smog this thing in the morning. Tomorrow. Well, here we are, about three miles from the, car, the check station. But the check engine light just came on, which is very upsetting. So whatever, back home. Yeah, you guessed it. It's that same code. And then my brain started sending me signals of hope about this bolt right here. Yeah, that little 10 mil holds on that bracket, but also grounds out some bits. Time for a flashback. 
episode 66 may have the answer. I'm going to put the spark plugs back in and I'm going to show you my mistake. I'm putting some anti-seize on there. I thought that would be good because, you know, stop them seizing. But Porsche recommend no anti-seize because it can interfere with the electrical connection of the spark plug and affect the spark. So don't do that. Double flashback, folks. It's serious. Here is episode 50 when we were putting the wiring harness on. Here is that wiring harness for the VarioCan solenoid, the crankshaft sensor, all that stuff. And I went buck wild with that Permatex blue thread locker on all the bolts, including that grounding bolt. Cam sensors, crank sensors, and the VarioCan plug, plus a grounding wire as well. Do you see what I'm thinking? So what I did off camera, because it was awkward to get a camera in there, so I unbolted that little bugger and I brushed off all the thread locker, bolted it back up, and here we go again. Here's what the Durametric looks like. I promise more detail in the future. The folks at Foxwell were kind enough to send me this NT614 Elite. I promise to get into it in more detail soon. What I will tell you though, is if you don't have a Durametric, from what I've found out so far, this thing will certainly get rid of a check engine light and will do everything you see me do in this video. So check out the link in the description and more about that coming soon. We're going to the ready status function and I reset the check engine light so everything is a fail again. Based on the dozens of module reset procedures online, I made this very simple version to go by, and we're gonna see how it works right now, real time. So we broke the first rule here. The car is not cold, so you do need to do a cold start. That's gonna come up later. Here we go. Right now we're doing the driving 20 to 30 miles an hour for three minutes. And within two minutes, we got a pass on the oxygen sensor heater doing the 20 to 30 mile per hour phase. I'm just looking over at the laptop and just sort of seeing what's going on and trying to keep under 30 miles an hour. Then after just five minutes, we've got the fuel tank ventilation pass came on. So then we're up to 40 to 60 miles an hour. And then after nine minutes, we got a pass on the oxygen sensors. Headed out onto the highway. Just annoying people doing 55 miles per hour in sixth. And then after 14 minutes of that, we got catalytic converter efficiency. And driving 55 miles an hour was pretty cool. I ended up with 30.5 miles per gallon. Tell me in the comments how that compares with you. I annoyed everybody on the highway doing that. No matter how hard I tried, I couldn't get that uh, secondary air system to go. But the next morning, I did a cold start. And then just within a few minutes there, a couple of minutes, I got a pass on everything. And so before anybody changed their mind, I put the monkey seat on and hit the road. Two seconds later. Back into the pressure cooker once again, retest time. They did say there wouldn't be much involved in the retest, Let's listen into the process. Bishop wore buttless chaps to the butt mitzvah. Butt mitzvah. Oh, oh, oh no! They're coming in through the back door! Right. Oh no! Oh no! It passed. That was it. We just needed to drive it a bit more to reset those monitors in the OBD2 computer. And it passed. That's all we have to do. So that means finally we can drive it legally. And then also uh, we can get the registration all completed and just drive it on the road like a regular car. Let's go. So that was very educational. 
And while it's true that the California vehicle inspection is relatively simple and focuses only on the emissions, I was thinking that that really just meant the gases that were coming out of the exhaust. I wasn't thinking about the modules in the OBD2 system having enough information to be able to reset themselves. And so learning that today, learning that routine where you drive for that certain amount of time worked like magic. And so if you're having trouble getting your car to pass emissions, perhaps that's what you need to try. Though unfortunately, that's all we have time for this week. Thank you very much for watching. Till next time. <laughs> Downtown San Diego, all the views. Okay, here we go. That is very, very pretty. Oh, it's been attacked by an octopus. The Kraken! Europe. And America. I'm not going to Starbucks, I'll never get out. Like Starbucks jail in the car park. Yeah, me too. It felt good this time. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. So, so you want to see my tits too? Really? <laughs> hey! Thanks for watching to the end, Earthlings. Well, actually, seeing as you're here, I would like to share one of my favorite differences between driving in Europe and driving in America. And that is in America. They really don't care if you pass on the wrong side. And so let me see if I can demonstrate without killing Andy and I here. Hold on, Andy, here we go. Might not be a good demonstration, I'm gonna scare this person. We were gonna undertake him just on purpose. Sorry, Mr. Lexus person. I have to undertake you for demonstration purposes. And then you have to not care in turn. Here we go. Undertaking, happening. There we go, hopefully no arresting. Oh, I can't undertake anyone because there is no one else. Hello, hello, yes, yes. There we go, all right. I'll get my Mario Andretti head back on here in a sec. Technically undertaking now. But you see what I mean, this would be the way the rules work. If this is the way your lane is moving, then you can completely go on the wrong side of whoever you feel like. And then if you want to go into a different lane, like here, if I want to, oh yeah, he's going over there. So if I feel like going over here, because this lane looks nice to me, because it's like nine billion lanes, then no one cares. Come on!